In today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about shave horses. In one of my previous videos, I made this tool right here, which is a log PV, meant for rolling logs over uh, when doing timber work. And in that video, I used this tool right here, which is a shave horse that I made a while back and use it um, every so often on some of my different projects. Um, it's made of oak with uh, legs I turned from cherry and then some steel parts, some different hardware parts, and then some pieces that I fabricated. Um, I had been getting some questions because of the video making the log PV about the design, uh, if I made it, and um, just some other general questions. So I wanted to bring it out today and show you and uh, let you know a little bit more about it. So let's take a closer look. First thing I want to go over is the dimensions of the shave horse. It measures 52 inches long, 6 inches wide, and 2 inches thick. And uh, like I mentioned, it is made out of oak with cherry legs. The, uh, the oak I used was some old rough oak that um, was a pretty big saw and beams that I cut down into the components that I needed. And the cherry came from, it was basically firewood. It was, uh, it really was firewood. It was some, for some leftover branches that I ended up uh, splitting up into firewood and grabbed a couple pieces to turn the legs out of these. As you can see, you know, the legs still have kind of rough exposed parts that didn't end up getting cut out when I turned the leg shape. But the rest of the dimensions are, talk about the height. It measures 18 inches tall, so it's a, just a little bit taller than a chair is. The, uh, talk about the clamp now. This part right here, which is the hinging part, I just refer to it as a ramp. I'm not sure if that's its technical name. Measures 19 inches long, and then it is also 6 inches wide. Well, it's actually 5 and 3 quarters. When it's a little bit narrower, it fits in between the jaws. The clamping mechanism, this part, this is the pedal part that you push on to clamp your workpiece down, measures 26 and 3 quarters inches long by 2 inches wide, and then the board is an inch and a quarter thick in this dimension. The clamping block in between the two parts measures, well, it measures 6 and a 16th. Doesn't probably really matter. It doesn't need to be exactly a 6 and a 16th, but then it is 2 inches by 2 inches. And then also you can see there, there's a small V-groove cut in it, which helps when working with smaller pieces, keeping them straight. And then also when you're working square blanks and you need to work one of the edges, you can stick the corner in there and it holds it upright without having it slip. The, uh, let's see, what other parts do we have that we would need to discuss the dimensions on? Well, we've got the actual part you step on at the bottom. That is going to measure the same width as this piece, whatever you make that, which I said was 6 and a 16th, just to make it a hair wider than the, um, than the board that you sit on. And then the full length of the pedal is 17 inches. This part was turned on the lathe where, let's see, this is a one inch diameter uh, tenon that goes through a hole and then the part in the middle is fatter to keep them spaced, um, uh, spaced according to the width of your bench. Another aspect of a shave horse that you need is something to adjust the height of this ramp. A lot of people just use sort of a wedge shaped block of wood. Oftentimes it basically looks like a piece of firewood that they're shoving back and forth. Well, I wanted something a little different than that, um, so I ended up coming up with this. It looks like basically a mallet, but it is a piece of oak, and we'll go ahead and just do the dimensions of it. It is five and, a, five and three quarters inches long, and it is two inches thick in its thinner dimension, and then two and three quarter in this dimension. And it has two holes in it with a handle. The handle can be inserted in that hole, which makes it set this up a little taller. Plus, you shove it back and forth to adjust the, the position of the ramp, depending on how thick your workpiece is. Um, and then you can also adjust the handle to fit into the skinnier side for if you're working a thicker piece. You can slide it way out here to the end 
and then you've got your maximum uh, your maximum jaw capacity really any lower than that and it really starts to get into sort of an awkward position so what you can do in those cases often is you can take another board uh, say like an inch or two thick board slip it in here and stick your workpiece on that and it gets your angle up into a more comfortable more natural working position to where you're not pulling like this and you're more pulling like that um, so that's sort of a nice feature and it was something I wasn't sure if I'd end up using much in the beginning and it turned out that it is something that I kind of switch back and forth on especially when you're working with different pieces of wood that are tapered as you as you start to bring uh, starting on a fatter end and coming down towards the skinnier end you need to uh, um, adjust this ramp and sometimes the if you have a thinner block once you've shoved it in far enough it means that this part is sort of hanging over your block so far and even in a, a two inch thick I mean a, this piece of wood is about an inch and a half thick you can start to get some flex out of it and so if it's thicker and you can have the block closer to the part where the jaw clamps onto makes it a little stiffer which is nice let's talk a little bit about some of the components of the shave horse and how it's all assembled the main clamping mechanism is controlled by these foot pedals here which uh, controls the whole jaw this whole unit is pivoting on about a 10 inch long half inch bolt and then to tighten it and uh, take it apart what I did is I took a nut and welded a 5 16 inch rod onto that nut at an angle and then turned a little walnut handle just uh, to make it a little more comfortable if you didn't want to do something like this you could just stick a nut on the end or either a wing nut it doesn't really matter I just liked the idea of having this to be able to tension this uh, part of the shave horse if I wanted to and um, so let's go ahead and take apart the jaw to show you the different parts and how it goes together one of the nice aspects of it being able to come apart is the fact that if any of the parts break you can remake them easily and like I said, the bolt is a 10 inch long, I believe. Let me make sure. It just needs to be long enough to go through all the parts. Yeah, it's nine and a half inches long. And what I did is I welded a washer to the head of the bolt to where when I take it apart, I wouldn't lose that. Um, and uh, so you remove that. Now all the hardware is removed and you just end up with this, but it's trapped onto the shave horse. So let me see if the parts might be a little tight. You just got to kind of wiggle them all apart. There we go. So here are the parts. So you end up with the vertical parts with a hole drilled for the pedal part at the bottom and then the locking pad at the top, whatever you want to call that. It's just sort of the jaw of the whole piece. Some of these parts are a little tight, so I'm not going to worry about taking them all apart now, but you get the idea. This was turned on the lathe with the steps down to one inch just needs to be fatter in the middle doesn't matter the dimension as long as it doesn't slip through the hole and it keeps these spaced out to a little bit wider than the thickness of the plank that you sit on the block up top is turned out of a single piece also um, if you didn't have a way to turn these I reckon you could uh, cut this block just using your table saw then on a drill press drill a hole and insert a one inch dowel into the end of it or you could drill all the way through it however you want to do it but making out a one piece uh, really simplifies it for me and I think it's easier for y'all if you have a lathe and you just want to turn those down to whatever size holes you want to drill in my case it's one inch um, so uh, we'll just set that aside for a second this part right here is um, I'm not going to completely disassemble it but I am going to describe it and uh, how it works is this plank, its length is 19 inches long by 5 and 3 quarters. But then in the center, there is a split that comes up the center about 2 inches. And through the bottom of the shave horse, there is a bolt. This is a quarter inch eye bolt that goes all the way up through with a, lock, with a washer and a locking nut underneath to where it doesn't vibrate loose over time that eye bolt is then into that slot that I mentioned it's a uh, a quarter inch plus slot 
and then you drill a hole through this plank and insert something like an oak dowel or you could even put a bolt through here to where you could remove it easier later on. I didn't glue it in so I could use some sort of a drift pin or something and knock it through if I need to, but that dowel goes through that eye bolt and then the eye bolt itself is not completely tightened up underneath which gives you a little leeway to be able to move this up and down. And uh, the nice thing is, is that, like I said, if anything goes wrong, you can always replace it. You're not uh, in a situation where you've glued a bunch of stuff together, which can uh, cause a lot of problems. Um, but uh, that is the basics of uh, that construction. Now let's talk a little bit about how the legs are constructed. And now that it's semi taken apart, it'll be a little easier to maneuver it around anyway. The legs, and uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned it already, but they are inserted into the plank into tapered holes. So that means the tenons of the legs are also tapered. And uh, this may be uh, an aspect of woodworking that some of you aren't familiar with, and some of you are. But I'll tell you how I did it. The first thing I needed to do was make a tapering tool. I did so using the blade of a keyhole saw. I took an old keyhole saw that I bought at a store for $2 with a bunch of extra blades taped to its blade and made this basically a tapered scraper. What I do, what you do is you file off the teeth first and then file both sides to where they're perfectly straight. Then you want to sharpen it the same way you would a cabinet scraper uh, by forming a burr onto its edge. Next I took a piece of uh, maple and turned a taper matching the taper of the keyhole saw blade. On the bandsaw, I split it right down the center, and that can be a little tricky. I used a V-block and just slid it down that V-block aligned with, the, uh, with um, the blade, parallel with the blade, and just cut right down its center. The key is, is when you stop cutting, and I fine-tuned that with a, uh, with a, um, using a Japanese saw. And what you want to do is have it to where the keyhole blade bottoms out into the wooden part of the tool to where you it leaves just a little bit of the tool exposed on the edges. And what this does is allows enough to hang out to where when you're going down there it's scraping in a controlled way, scraping just a fine amount out. If it's scraping too heavy, it'll just want to hang. But once you get a nice burr on this tool and um, the holes drilled at the angles, you can really get this in there and work it down and really control the angle and get a perfect taper. Um, and I'll go very briefly into how you taper these holes. I drilled all of these holes using a... hope I didn't just mess my sound up there. Hold on. Get all this untangled. Excuse me if that caused a bunch of staticky noise. I got a wireless mic. Um, but I used a brace and bit with a one inch bit in it to drill my holes. The angles of these holes you set with a T-bevel to adjust the splay of the leg. And the splay means it's sort of the tilt back and the tilt out. So meaning, um, keeping in mind the parallel, uh, I mean, um, the plane of the bench means tilting it this way and then tilting it out. And so the splay is sort of, I guess, a compound splay. I'm not sure what you really refer to it as. But using a T-bevel, I create sight lines that I then am able to kind of sight down the, uh, the, the bit in the brace and then, and then keeping everything kind of in line with that layout mark. And you'll use that line to drill your hole and then to taper it. So once you've drilled your one inch hole, you then take your tapering jig, stick it into that hole, and at first it's not going to go all the way down in there. And then you're just going to start gradually scraping away and work down to that uh, to the depth you need to where you get a full taper all the way through. And as you're going to be going through that hole, you're going to notice that sometimes you'll drift off to one way or another, but it's no big deal. This tool works so slow that you're able to make a lot of adjustments throughout. The other thing you're going to need to do as you're going, you'll notice at some point that it stops scraping. So you will have to, um, to pull the tool out, remove the blade, kind of knock off the chips, put the blade back in and then continue scraping. You're going to do this to all four corners. I mean all four holes. 
after you get all your holes drilled and tapered, then you're going to want to turn your legs. I turned these out of cherry firewood and then ended up turning the uh, now I'm turning these to taper by doing another tapered hole on a small block of wood, cutting it in half to expose that uh, half of the tapered hole. So while I'm turning it, first I just sort of do it to eye, making sure not to go too far, and then I test fit that, that, uh, col that hole that's been cut in half as sort of a template to do all four legs. And then uh, you take it off, and I mean you still have, you still have your center's mark, so you can pull it out insert it into your hole and test it. And if it's not right, you can get it back on your lathe. You can also do a little hand scraping on it to fine tune it. But this isn't something that you're going to end up gluing up. The nice thing is about a tapered hole is that it just gets tighter. Um, even if uh, through expansion and contraction this hole is always going to be um, uh, a consistent fit to the tenon because it can just, it's a slip joint basically. It constantly is slipping in and out depending on uh, the fit. So let me slip these back in. And one of the nice things about this, being able to come apart like this, is being able to store it easy, move it around easy. You could throw it in the back of a car, the trunk of a car, back of your truck. Um, if one of the legs breaks, you don't have to, you don't have to do anything weird by cutting it apart, drilling anything you just replace it, just make a new one. Um, and this is also just in general a good way of constructing things um, if you just want to make a bench in general. It doesn't have to be a shave horse. And here's a closer look at the tapering tool. I feel like a fair amount of people are probably going to be interested in this so I wanted to make sure I showed it enough and uh, perhaps I'll do another video on this in the future. But like I said it's a keyhole saw blade with the teeth filed off and then the edges are straightened out with the file and then you um, form a burr onto the edge just like a cabinet scraper. Then it's inserted into the wooden part of the tool, turned to the same taper, split on the bandsaw in the middle, then you need a blockier side at the top of the tool with a handle going through. It's just sort of like, a, it looks like a big tap almost and um, that's pretty much all there is to it. You just want to make sure that the blade is exposed a little bit on both sides because it will scrape from both sides and it sort of self-centers itself. Um, and uh, then you just go to town on it. And like I said before, you'll have to remove the blade every once in a while and you kind of do this sort of an action and it knocks out all the chips because it gets kind of loaded to the point to where it will not um, uh, um, cut anymore because it's just too packed, sort of like a hand plane when the the when it gets kind of jammed up with chips so um there's that and uh feel free to ask questions about this tool and like i said i'll probably do another video in the future um maybe showing how to make this well that about wraps things up for this video and i hope it was enjoyable and helpful to you out there who are planning on designing and building a shave horse of your own perhaps some of the features that i incorporated in mine will be useful to you I'll be posting up some more pictures of this on Facebook, so be sure to head on over there and take a look at those. Click the like button and leave a comment. Also here on YouTube, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel if you're not already and leave a comment, leave questions, I'll try to get a reply to those. Also the thumbs up button. I know I'm asking a lot, but it helps me out a lot in seeing what people are liking. You can also leave suggestions under the video for future videos or if you saw anything in my mixture of tools here or anything I commented on today that you would like elaborated on in the future. So other than that, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, I think you'll enjoy the video where I made the log PV. I ended up using a makeshift wheelbarrow forge, forging out the hook, shaping out the handle on the shaving horse, and once I got the whole thing made and put together, it was quite a nice little log PV. Please give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.